how Princess Diana was humiliated by the royal family with the Squidgygate scandal. The true story behind Princess Diana's recorded phone call scandal. Princess Diana is remembered as the people's princess, but she dealt with her fair share of royal scandals during her time as Princess of Wales. From criticism over her fashion sense to rumours of trouble in her marriage to Prince Charles, those turned out to be true, Diana faced a number of struggles while she was a member of the monarchy. But one of her greatest scandals began on New Year's Eve in 1989, when she answered a phone call from James Gilby while she was at Sandringham with the rest of the royal family. What started as a simple call between friends would quickly turn into a media nightmare that shocked the royal family and even Diana herself. In 1992, while Prince Charles and Princess Diana were still married, media outlets published the transcript of a conversation between Diana and an alleged lover named James Gilby. In the conversation, Gilby told Diana that he loved her and called her by the pet name Squidgy 53 times. That's how the scandal earned the memorable moniker Squidgygate, because what she didn't know at the time was that the call was being recorded. The same thing happened to Diana's husband, Prince Charles. Not long after Diana's leaked phone call, Prince Charles had one of his own. But how? Diana's relationship with James Gilby. James Gilby was the heir to a large gin fortune when he met Diana a decade earlier after the pair were set up on a date together. However, Gilby stood Diana up and left her furious, she and a flatmate allegedly covering his flash car in flour and eggs as revenge, Tina Brown writes in the Diana Chronicles. The pair reconnected in the late 80s, by which time Diana's marriage to Charles was already failing, and they became friendly. However, it's never been clear if their relationship progressed beyond friendship. Though Diana had already been involved in an affair with her riding instructor, James Hewitt, in 1986, there's no evidence to suggest that she engaged in a similar relationship with Gilby. In fact, Gilby has denied suggestions that he and the princess were involved romantically. Others aren't so sure, with some royal experts suggesting the pair had a dalliance of some sort. But affair or no affair, the phone call on New Year's Eve in 1989 seemed to suggest a certain level of intimacy between Diana and Gilby. The recorded phone call. Diana and Gilby had no idea their call was being recorded as they chatted casually on New Year's Eve. Diana ducking away from the rest of the royal family to take the call. Their conversation seemed mostly like a catch-up between friends, each recounting their respective holidays. Diana was away with the royal family. Gilby was off to a party. But it didn't stay that way. As the conversation progressed, things got more intimate between the pair, Gilby constantly calling Diana by pet names like Darling and Squidgy. At one point he asks about her day and Diana responds, I was very bad at lunch and I nearly started blubbing. I thought bloody hell the things I have done for this effing family. If the slight against the royal family wasn't controversial enough, the pair then began blowing one another kisses while Gilby mentions playing with himself. Kiss me please, Gilby tells Diana down the phone. Do you know what I'm going to be imagining I'm doing tonight at about 12 o'clock? Just holding you close to me. It'll have to be delayed action for 48 hours. Later he tells her, No, I haven't played with myself actually, not for a full 48 hours. The entire exchange was caught on tape by a retired bank manager and radio enthusiast who claimed he heard and recorded the conversation with his home setup. 
He sold the tape to the Sun, and the outlet's royal correspondents knew they had something salacious on their hands. The story breaks. Despite the Sun having the tapes, they chose not to break the story in 1989. In fact, it didn't come out until another person, Jane Norgrove, revealed she also allegedly recorded the conversation a few days after the banker. She reportedly then shared the tapes with Richard Kay at the Daily Mail and the National Enquirer's London Bureau. The Enquirer received the tapes in early 1991 and broke the story in the US in August of 1992, years after the call had even taken place. British publications quickly picked up the story and the entire transcript of Diana and Gilby's conversation was subsequently published by outlets around the world. A horrified Diana was at Balmoral in Scotland when the news broke and was reportedly equal parts mortified and devastated when she realised what had happened. The scandal was quickly dubbed Squidgygate, one of the sillier names for a royal scandal. Truth Behind the Recordings Though both people who recorded Diana's call claimed they picked it up on home radio sets, Diana's former bodyguard, Ken Wharf, has suggested it wasn't by accident. Diana did say to me on a number of occasions she felt she and other members of the family were being monitored. Wharf told a 2008 inquest into the princess's death. He claimed that a British Secret Service agent had actually recorded the call and then broadcast it on a loop in the hope someone else would hear it and realise what it was, then take it to the press. Other royal experts have suggested that it is unlikely that two radio enthusiasts with basic home equipment would have accidentally heard and recorded the calls days apart. Some have even suggested that Diana's phone lines were bugged while others claim the recording was fabricated or altered. Squidgygate is upstaged. Somewhat fortunately for Diana, just a few months after the story about her recorded call broke, a second royal scandal rocked the world. Camillagate. A phone call between Charles and his then affair partner, Camilla Parker Bowles, was also recorded and leaked to the press, and its contents were far saucier than the call between Diana and Gilby. In the call, Charles says he wants to be Camilla's tampon, as well as other X-rated confessions between the pair. The scandal took the attention away from Diana's recorded call, and even today, Camillagate is the far more infamous of the two scandals. Then Diana gave a bombshell TV interview, and the marriage finally collapsed for good. In 1995, Diana sat down for a tell-all solo interview with journalist Martin Bashir to talk about the immense pressures of public life and her struggles with self-harm postpartum depression and bulimia. She also revealed that she knew about Charles's affair with Camilla. There were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded, she famously quipped. And Diana even admitted that she'd been unfaithful to Charles, saying that she had been in love with James Hewitt, her riding instructor. A few weeks later, the Queen herself urged her son and daughter-in-law to divorce, and the following year, they made it official. Charles and Camilla, on the other hand, wed in 2005 and are still together. Charles and Diana divorce. On July the 29th, 1981, nearly one billion television viewers in 74 countries tuned in to witness the marriage of Prince Charles, heir to the British throne, 
to Lady Diana Spencer, a young English school teacher. Married in a grand ceremony at St Paul's Cathedral in the presence of 2,650 guests, the couple's romance was, for the moment, the envy of the world. Before long, however, the fairy tale couple grew apart, an experience that was particularly painful under the ubiquitous eyes of the world's tabloid media. Diana and Charles announced a separation in 1992, though they continued to carry out their royal duties. In August 1996, two months after Queen Elizabeth II urged the couple to divorce, the prince and princess reached a final agreement. In exchange for a generous settlement and the right to retain her apartments at Kensington Palace and her title of Princess of Wales, Diana agreed to relinquish the title of Her Royal Highness and any future claims to the British throne. In the year following the divorce, the popular princess seemed well on her way to achieving her dream of becoming a queen in people's hearts. But on August the 31st, 1997, she was killed with her companion Dodie Fired in a car accident in Paris. An investigation conducted by the French police concluded that the driver, who also died in the crash, was heavily intoxicated and caused the accident while trying to escape the paparazzi photographers who consistently tailed Diana during any public outing. Yeah.